If you want to be a happy, well-paid photographer, you've no doubt heard that it's important to narrow down your niche. Or in other words, to choose a specific kind of photography that you specialize in and become known for. But if you're multi-passionate like I am, you might be wondering, do I really have to choose just one? And if so, how do I choose? Do you go with what's most profitable or what you love the most? How do you find that perfect niche as a photographer. If you've had similar questions, I've got your back. I'm going to be sharing insights from my over a decade of experience as a full-time professional photographer, as well as three simple tips that you can do today to bring you closer to discovering your specialty and building a name for yourself as a photographer. And be sure to also stick to the end for a bonus tip on how to ensure that the niche you choose is a profitable one. Let's dig in. For starters, you might be wondering, why should I specialize? Is it really necessary? And if this is you, I get that niching can be difficult and it could feel like this big commitment that's maybe limiting our creativity. And if you really don't want to, you don't need to niche. However, if you find yourself having a hard time getting inquiries or the ones you are getting tend to be a lot of price shoppers, your lack of a niche could be a big part of the problem. What I've discovered is when you embrace niching, it can help you grow fast, it can help you raise rates, and it can help you become visible and more desirable to your dream clients. To share a little bit of my story, when I started out, I also did many kinds of photography. I started out with nature and landscapes and then moved on to fine art portraits. I did babies, I did families, I did couples. I did a little bit of it all. And in the beginning, I don't actually think that that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's great to experiment when we're just starting out and try a lot of different things to find those things that we're most drawn to. But it wasn't until I started to specialize that people really started to take me and my business seriously. And that's when things scaled really quickly in my business. As a photographer, I find it can be really easy to feel like you need to be everything to everyone. And heck, you know, it's also fun shooting multiple things. In fact, even though I specialize in weddings now, I still love other genres of photography. But the problem is when we stay in the place of being the everything photographer, it can be a struggle to get paid what you're worth. The truth is specialists are viewed as more valuable and therefore get paid more and can more easily charge a premium for their services. I mean, think about it. If you had a serious medical condition, you wouldn't just want any old town doctor. No, when something is important, we turn to specialists that we know that we can trust. And the same is true for our favorite kinds of photography clients, the ones that really value what we do as photographers and are willing to pay a premium for it. Our dream clients are looking for their dream photographer. And that's typically going to be somebody that loves and specializes in the precise images that they need. Specialization builds trust and trust leads to not only more, but also better bookings. So if you have goal to do photography as a professional, uh, where you get paid really well through your art, I highly recommend niching down. Now, if you're multi-passionate, you're my peeps. I totally feel you on how hard it can be to narrow down when you love multiple things, but hear me out. Specializing does not mean that you cannot still photograph other things that you love and accept other work outside of your niche. Not at all. In fact, you can still accept other work, especially in the beginning when you might not have enough paying clients within your desired niche yet. But what you'll want to do is niche your marketing. As I tell my students, it's important to always show what you want to shoot. And similarly, we only want to show what we want to become known for. But how do you decide that? This is going to require a little bit of soul searching, but to help you get started, I've broken it into three easy steps that I recommend to help you get more clarity around your perfect niche. Step one is to think about what you love to shoot. If you had 100% confidence, what would you most love to photograph? Do you have one to two favorite kind of shoots that when you close your eyes and think about getting an inquiry for them, you feel most excited about? Or on the flip side, are there certain kinds of shoots that you maybe dread or don't look forward to shooting? These might be things that you cross off your list because these are signs that you shouldn't be doing this kind of work because it's something that's going to burn you out in the long run. Never get into a niche just for the money because this is the quick road to burnout. Now, when doing this exercise, you may find that you love multiple kinds of photography. And if so, that's okay. For this first part, simply make a list of all of your favorite things that you love shooting or would love to shoot. Second is who do you love photographing? Who are your dream clients or the people that you most love working with? If you're established, 
Think about your favorite past clients. Can you find a common theme there? Or if you're new to photography, this might be the clients that you share a similar stage of life with. For instance, if you've recently graduated, you might love capturing high school seniors. Or if you're newly married and just love all things weddings, you may really relate to newly engaged couples. Or as a mom who's obsessed with her babies, you may be able to relate and more easily cater to the emotions and needs of new moms who are looking for a maternity or a newborn photographer. Whatever it is for you, write down all the people that you would most love to work with. And then number three is what lifestyle do you desire? Now, this might not seem related, but it's super important to our long-term success and happiness as photographers. We really want to always be looking at reverse engineering our goals. How many shoots do you want to take per year? Do you want to travel or would you like to be close to home? Do you want to work weekends? Or are you okay with being on call or booked up well in advance? These are all things that are going to factor into the niche that you choose. For example, with my niche of weddings, I work many weekends, especially in the spring and fall months when the weather is nice and weddings are at their peak. But it gives me a lot of flexibility for the rest of my year, and I absolutely love weddings. So for me, it's worth giving up a handful of my weekends each year in order to do these. But for others, this might be a non-negotiable. So I'm a firm believer that our business should be created around our life not the other way around. So definitely take into account the lifestyle that you want. So write down these three things and take some time to journal through these. And as you workshop through these questions, it's really gonna help you get clarity on your niche that is going to best align with what you love, the people you love working with, and your desired lifestyle. But if you wanna do photography as a business, not just a hobby, there's one final thing that we really wanna consider. And I wanted to end with this with a tip to make sure your niche that you're considering is going to be a profitable one. But first, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It's one of the best ways that you can support my little channel and also stay in the loop for more videos like this one dedicated to helping you build a thriving business as a photographer, one that fills your soul and your bank account. All right, last question that we wanna consider is, is there a market and demand for your niche. When it comes to choosing a niche, many photographers give the advice to solely base it on what you love. And I agree with this to an extent. I agree that we should always first lead with our heart and discover what our areas of passion are. But if you base your niche solely on this, you risk getting stuck in that struggling artist bucket. And this is where I want no one to live. So it's fine if you simply want to do photography as a hobby, there's nothing wrong with that. But to make a thriving living from it, you can't ignore the money side. And on the flip side, a lot of other photographers teach to focus just on a niche that's going to be the most profitable. I believe this is also a huge mistake and could lead to down the line really hating photography and eventually burning out. So that's not a good way to go either. <laughs> Instead, if you want to build a profitable and sustainable business, you need to focus on both, both the passion and profitability side of the equation. So the ideal niche is one that aligns your passion with profits. So you can make an amazing, sustainable living doing what you love. Now I could make a whole video on this topic. It's one I'm super passionate about. So let me know in the chat if you want more on this, but a quick tip to tell if there's demand for what you have to offer is seeing if there's competition for it. Often I find that we think of competition as being a bad thing when in fact competition shows there's demand for what it is we have to offer, that there are people to service in that marketplace. If there's not a lot of demand for a certain kind of photography you love, you might consider still doing it, but keeping it as a hobby or a side project rather than having it as your career specialty. Now, this isn't to say don't go after what you love because I know photographers of all genres who are very successful and when in doubt, test. See if the market will pay for what you're thinking about servicing. But you really wanna consider where is the market for that kind of photography and does it align with both your lifestyle and business goals? Because if not, and you have a lot of different things that you're passionate about, you definitely wanna take that into consideration when narrowing down your niche. Uh, if you have any other questions on this, definitely drop them in the chat. 
I'd love to help and can perhaps dive even deeper uh, in a future video. And I'd love to know what niche or niches do you love the most? Tell me below and I will catch you in the next video.